Hello everyone, and welcome to day 9 of my advent calendar. Today I'm going to be making a log burner, and I've looked at many of these examples online, and I've also gathered some materials and some uh, measurements, and here, for instance, I have a little box just to give myself an idea of size and scale. And I also gathered some materials and I have here a glass slide by, uh, this is an old box by Achva Color. And um, the slide window or the, the glass slide is perfect as the door for the log burner. So I'm going to be using that. And that actually doesn't look square, but I think that has to do with the paper. Because if I hold it against my straight edge, it is perfectly square. So that paper is going to come out, come, going to come off. I'm going to um, wash that and clean it off, and then use that as one of my materials. So get rid of that box. And I also have some metal metal pipe, and um, I've had this for a long time. I don't, it looks so familiar, and I cannot remember what it came from. But um, this is going to be perfect as the chimney flue. Great size. So I'll be using that as well. So then knowing all that uh, with these sizes and these materials, I'm going to be making a little sketch. So there is my rough sketch. Um, and I do, I do have the total measurements, like the height and the depth and the width. So, um, and of course, this is my, I'm not cutting that any smaller. So that's my starting point. But um, I think I like this. Um, this is fairly simple to make, so I'm not going to be making detailed drawings. Uh, I'm just going to make a box with a window or with a door and a window in it, a top and a bottom um, and that's supposed to be a drawer. I'm not going to make a real drawer um, to do the ashes but um, I will make this an opening door. This is going to be a simple build so what I've done is cut out a paper template of the drawing Like that. <laughs> I've got some wood here and I think it's walnut and um, because of the huge flames in there the pattern is just far too big for making miniatures. I will never be using this so I thought I'd use it for this project and um, that's because I'm going to be painting it black anyway. So I think with a base coat or two and uh, good sanding and two layers of paint on top of that. I think you won't be able to see the grain of the wood or the pattern in there. So this is what I'm using. So for the front, I'll be cutting out this first. Then I have the bases. So here it is, the front of the log burner, and um, the window, the door with the window is going to be just a fraction bigger than the window. So not to cover up all of it, just it has to be um, just slightly inside the outer edge. So I'll do that now. 
I've cut two strips of wood slightly thinner than the front of the log burner, otherwise it's going to be so bulky. And uh, I've cut a rebate in the back, and you've seen me do that in one of my vlogs. And the rebate is to have the glass sit in there, like that. So it's going to fit in there like that. And now I'm going to make a little frame around it, a little door frame, just like I did in my door making video. And it's exactly the same way, um, except for, of course, now the, the central panel is glass and in the door it's wood. So, but the basics are the same. That's finished. Um, it's not attached yet because I still have to paint it, but um, this is the door, or it should be that way. Um, so that goes over there, like that. And um, it fits in beautifully there. Now, next step. I've cut out two side panels and they are almost four centimeters wide. And I'm saying almost because by the time, and I will cut a rebate in here in the back as well, little one, small one. And by the time that fits into the re rebate that will be four centimeters wide and the legs I want the same legs on the sides as on the front so what I'll do is I've taken another copy of the design I'll split that in half where's my knife here and I'll just glue that on here and that one on here, like that. So then the feet, of course, are closer together and they fit on the panel. That's finished and uh, I've sanded them down a little bit and now I have to try and tease these apart because I stuck them together with a tiny bit of glue and if you're quick enough it's fine and it it was just a really small amount so now I have two parts that are exactly the same and I'll have to take the paper off and uh, sand that a little bit as well off. But now I have two side panels like that and like that. And um, now I will cut a little groove. Oh, that's the <laughs> that's the front. I will cut a little groove in the back here so that the side panels will have more gluing surface and they'll fit right in there. There, grooves are cut. And um, so now the side panels will fit in there and I'll have a much bigger gluing surface and a much stronger bond. And now I'm going to cut the back panel and I'm doing that the same way as the front. That's done as well. And now I'm going to do exactly the same on the back here as I did on the front. 
cut two grooves so that the side panels fit in there. Also done, and um, I've kept the settings on the saw the same as the front, and that's important. Well, you can always reset it, but it's easier to just, you know, you, you don't have to adjust it. And um, I'm going to use the same setting again because now I'm going to cut a groove right along the bottom here because I have to put a bottom piece in there because we're going to be making, it's going to be a box and the top is going to sit on top but I would like the bottom to have a little insert as well. So I have to cut them on all four pieces like that. Now I have to make sure I'm doing them on the correct side but um, yeah. So basically it's going to run all along the bottom here. Sorry, I should choose a ruler for that. <laughs> but you get the idea. So the grooves in the side panels are cut as well. So they go together like that. And then in here, I'm going to cut a piece of wood so that I have a bottom as well. Okay, I've sanded everything and um, the little door as well. And I've rounded off these edges a tiny bit because I think these cast iron um, stoves or, or uh, log burners are always a little bit, they're not that sharp. So I've done that. And I've also checked that the log burner is uh, straight. It's sitting straight on the on its feet, standing straight on its feet. And uh, now I'm going to paint it. And I'm starting with the inside. And I thought, because I have one of these log burners, and the inside there's some, uh, it's like a fire stone in there. And in my case, it's quite light. Um, so I'm going to try this sandstone color first and see what it looks like on the inside and on the outside. Well, <laughs> it has to be black. So, but I'll first do the inside and then start on the outside. the log burner several coats of paint and uh, while that is drying and now something's drying on the inside I'm starting on the hinges and I was going to make them out of brass and solder them but I don't have the right size because if you this is the the size I have and if you hold that against the door I think that's just slightly too big to work as a hinge uh, I could order new ones, but they're expensive and I don't need that much. So instead, I thought I could use these uh, cotton swabs or Q-tips because these are, if I cut a little end off, you can see, they're hollow inside. They're little tubes. And nowadays they're made of uh, bamboo, I believe, but I still have the old ones, uh, the plastic ones. So I think I can use those and that will look much better scale-wise. Now I do have a bit of metal or brass rod here because we need to make it into a little hinge and I need to bend this. So that needs to be brass unless you have something like 
what is that called? Styro that plastic that you can easily bend. It's the white stuff. I don't have that, so I guess you could use that. And then you can easily glue that as well. Um, and that fits in here perfectly. And um, I guess this is... You'll have to measure yourself which what fits best. This is 1.6 millimeters wide. And so the inside of this tube is one point, well, seven, <laughs> six and a half. It fits really nicely in there. So I'll start making a hinge and I'll need a little, little, just get my pen. About this size, that would be about right. And then I'm going to cut that in half as well. Because one half will be attached to the door and the other half will be attached to the log burner. So when you cut this, try to get it straight um, so that it has a nice action. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, lopsided and it won't open as nicely. OK, I managed to cut both of them the same size. They're about 6.3 millimeters long, if you want to know. Um, and it doesn't matter, really. It's up to you how long you want them. Now I have to cut them in half, and that's, again, going to be difficult. So I'm going to do that off camera because, again, the camera is above me and I won't be able to, <laughs> to see what I'm doing. So I'll be back in a sec. So now for the hinge part, I'm got a little bit of brass rod here, which fits exactly onto the plastic. So what I'll do with some flat nosed pliers, I think they're called, just grab onto that and push over the end so that it's in a 90 degree bend. And I'll need four of those and I'll have to cut that off as well. And one end will go into one of these and the other end will go into either the door or the log burner. So I'm gluing two of them down onto the bent bit of rod. And this is the top part. And I want that wire to stick out. Because that's going to go into the bottom wire. Bottom uh, round end. You'll see in a minute what I mean. I'm trying to explain this. <laughs> I'm sure you'll understand what I'm trying to do here. So that one... And this is just, the plastic just grabs onto the metal really quickly, so it only needs a little bit of glue. And let that dry. And then the bottom ones, I'll have to cut that off. Because the bottom ones, this one has to go into the bottom one. So the bottom one only, it only has to come up to here. Right there. Because then it holds on to the plastic and then inside it's empty the rest of it so that bit can go in there so i have to cut a little bit off here of the brass wire and i just have to make sure i don't make it too short because it has to sit in there but it's about there Let me see. So that goes on there, like that. Straight, and then it's the rest is empty in there, so that one can go in there. And I'm just using super glue for this. Dip that in it and in there. Grab my and I want it to be straight and not too far in because I need to have some room 
for the other hinge part. There. Now I'm going to have to attach this half of the hinge to the door. And it's only going to be in there a tiny bit because the glass is going to be there. So um, I have to drill a hole in there and it has to be the size of the rod. So I have to look at the, how big the rod is. And it's 1.5 or 1.45 millimeters. So I'll get a 1.5 drill. Now, while I'm waiting for some of the paint to dry and on my hinges as well, uh, I'm starting on the top and I've cut a piece of wood. And this is lime. I had a bit laying around. I just had the right thickness here. But anyway, um, I have to measure the spot for the chimney flue. So, um, and I have to make sure that it's the right size because I have to drill a hole in there. One of these rulers. And this one, I think I've said that before. I've had this since my college days, so that's a long time ago. So um, it's very nice to determine the center. There. Oh, I should use a pencil. Um, approximately, oh, it's not quite straight. And again, I'm blaming this on the fact that I cannot see uh, because the camera is overhead. And if I go in close, so I'm looking at it from an angle. If I go in close, uh, you'll see the back of my head <laughs> constantly. So it's always a little bit of a struggle doing this on camera. There, that should be fine. And where do I want it? So I'd like it not quite, oh yeah, I have to make sure that the um, thickness, well, doesn't really matter because it's not a real flu, but um, if I cut a hole in it, then if I go far uh, back too far, it might hit this, the back of this, back of the log burner, the wood. So... I don't want to go beyond that, so let's say here, and then get a hole approximately that size. That should be okay. Um, so that size in a circle, and um, that should fit in there. Well, it turns out I didn't have a drill that size, drill bit that size, so I cut it out with a saw anyway. And now it fits in perfectly. And I've also decided I would add a washer around here. Now, I do hope I have one in that size, otherwise I have to cut one from wood. Okay, I have loads of them, but none of them have the... in inside diameter that I'm looking for. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, use one of these and then cut the center out. Oh 
almost finished. I've made the painted the washer on top and glued it down on the top part. I have uh, sanded and spray painted the flue and I cut it to size. And it's still on a little stick for drying. And I've spray painted the hinges and attached them to the door and to the uh, stove, the burner, the log burner. Now I did make a little design mistake because I couldn't get the hinges in far enough. Um, it just just didn't want to go in. Uh, so then um, the turning point of the hinges ended up a little bit outside the log burner and it was supposed to be on there on this part and now it's a little bit on the outside. So I had to drill um, at an angle, but it's fine. I mean, it's not really what I wanted because I wanted a really clean look. And now the hinges are on the outside. <laughs> I'm being very picky here. <laughs> anyway, um, what's left to do is make a handle on here. And I'll do that the same way as I did the hinges. And with some brass rod and a little bit of this plastic. And then I'll make a little handle here. And then glue in the glass. And then... The other thing I did, it's very simple. I just uh, twisted together some cotton uh, knitting yarn because most, well, actually all log burners, they have a heat resistant rope around the glass and the door. And mine also has some, some of that around the flue. So I'll do that both of that on the inside and around the flue. I just, it's just a little detail, which I kind of like those things. So I'll do that. So I'll start by making a handle. The log burner is finished and I must say it's exactly the way I hoped it would be. I really like it. Of course, all it needs now is a nice warm fire, but that will be for another day. Until next time!